you for joining us from the International Space Station Flight Control Room at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. We're live in the Mission Control Center where the Orbit 2 team, or second shift, is on duty working with the crew. The team is being led by Flight Director Jerry Jason and astronaut Serena Onan serving as the Capcom. The on-orbit crew is busy at work and a little play today. It's the afternoon for the Expedition 36 crew of NASA astronauts Karen Nyberg and Chris Cassidy, European Space Agency astronaut Luca Parmitano, and Russian cosmonauts Alexander Masurkin, Fyodor Yurchikin, and Pavel Vinogradov serving as the commander. The crew is in the afternoon of their crew day and all of the activities going smoothly. Right now, astronauts Chris Cassidy and Karen Nyberg are in the midst of an educational outreach program with the SPHERES robots on board. SPHERES stands for Synchronized Position Hold, Engage, Reorient, Experimental Satellites. They just started this activity about 30 minutes ago and will continue for the next couple of hours. This activity part of the Zero Robotics Middle School competition at MIT. The participating school students are there at the university watching live as the onboard SPHERE robots execute the student programming to determine the winners. Meanwhile, the rest of the crew is continuing with their activities. Russian uh, cosmonauts are continuing with the preparations for the upcoming spacewalk. Fyodor Yurchikin and Alexander Mserkin have spent the day preparing for Friday's EVA, outfitting their Russian Orlon spacesuits with the EVA tools and other equipment reviewing their spacewalk procedures and conducting telemetry tests from the suits to Russian flight controllers at the Russian Commission Control Center in Korolev outside of Moscow. They also have some experiment work as well as exercise sessions planned. Meanwhile, European Space Agency astronaut Luca Parmitano is conducting some work with the waste and hygiene compartment, performing some pre-treat tank removal and replace activities. The morning also included some continued HTV work with Chris Cassidy and Karen Nyberg continuing with the un unloading of the cargo that was brought up by that cargo craft this past weekend. Again, all of those activities going well. The crew will continue with their afternoon, wrapping up with a daily planning conference with the ground control teams at 2 p.m. Central Time. They'll have some off-duty time for their evening meal and personal time and a few end-of-day tasks before their uh, sleep, which is scheduled for 4.30 p.m. Central Time. that the charge was continuing. The debris unit is installed. Same one that you wanted. 61, right? I think so. I think 61. Okay, we copy and thank you. I will reboot it and then we'll see on this, this USB drive, the same thing. Okay, we copy and we will be standing by. 
You're listening in as you hear some ground discussion there with the ground control teams in the Mission Control Center near Moscow talking with the Russian counterparts. Again, primarily focused today on preparations for the spacewalk, which is planned for Friday. Here's for Karen on there. ground three. We're back with you on video. Welcome back. And as you're hearing, we're getting a live view back on the International Space Station where Chris Cassidy and Karen Nyberg are continuing with a student competition as part of the Zero Robotics uh, Middle School Final Competition. This is taking place with the students at MIT University. Nine middle schools there uh, represented and uh, watching as their robotics programming is being played out in this competition. Uh, they literally have a bracket system that is underway there in the... Uh, first third of this competition, which is expected to last for a couple of hours. Karen and Chris, uh, again, executing the actual activity. This is a... Uh, Are you ready for us to uh, start with the repeat of Foxtrot? Here's copy, that's affirmative. This is a pre predetermined a game as described uh, from the Zero Robotics website. These matches are played between two SPHERES satellites that compete to get through a virtual course fastest using the least fuel. The game is broken up into three zones. In the first zone, both SPHERES have the opportunity to lay down virtual dust clouds in the playing field to simulate space junk ablation. In addition, the dust clouds are placed in the return path of the opponents when they head to the finish. In the second zone, the player must rendezvous with a virtual disabled satellite. After acquiring the antenna of this virtual satellite, players may collect virtual resupply packs that give SPHERES satellites extra fuel. The antenna enables the SPHERES satellites to locate those dust clouds laid out by the other player, and then they have to navigate through those dust clouds to reach the finish line. Five is in the gym where they are doing the experiment. Is there another SSC you'd like us to use? As you can see, they're resuming that competition. The players must complete this course within three minutes. And again, the fastest player with the most fuel at the end of the match is the winner. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. Both red and blue satellites are laying their obstacles. See that? This is a live view in the Japanese exploration module, the GEM module. You can see these spheres, robots there, uh, floating as it were. They're about bowling ball size. There's uh, two that are being used for this activity, but there are three on board. As we mentioned, there are nine student teams participating in this activity as part of the uh, finalists for today's competition. They include the Astro Gators from Lewis Carroll Elementary in Merritt Island, Florida, Ralph Williams from the Wa Ralph Williams Elementary in Rockledge, Florida, St. Lucie II, which is from Southern Oaks Middle School in Port St. Lucie, Florida, Bellwood BGC, which is Salvation Army Boys and Girls Club of Metro Atlanta from Atlanta, Georgia, the Boise team from South Junior High in Boise, Idaho. ID STEM from North Idaho STEM in Rathdrum, Idaho. The Malden YMCA team from Malden, Massachusetts. Team Salem Cyberspace from Salem, Massachusetts. And Timility from Timility Middle School in Boston, Massachusetts. Spheres blue just picked up item one, red just picked up item zero. Things are moving along nicely.
Okay, it looks like this match is complete. The blue satellite, Boise, has a number of 46, and the red satellite, Ralph Williams, a number of 24. Here's copies, 46 for blue, 24 for red, and that camera view uh, Chris is phenomenal. I think you might have started a trend here for the rest of our Sears test sessions. That's what he does. He sets trends. As you saw in that view, astronaut Chris Cassidy holding the Spheres robots, and again, as you can see, one of them clearly red and the other blue. Likewise, the crew uh, participants themselves donning red and blue to align themselves with the competition, so definitely getting in the spirit of things as they continue with this Zero Robotics uh, Middle School Finals competition. And we will, you can move on to uh, run golf. Okay, moving on to golf. Help me with the pronunciation of Team 8. Stand by. Again, this is all part of the Zero ro Robotics, which is a robotics programming competition where the robots are sphere satellites inside the space station. The competition actually starts online via a website where the teams can compete to solve an annual challenge guided by mentors. The participants can create, share, submit code all from a web browser and after several phases, excuse me, phases of virtual competition, finalists are selected to compete in a live championship as you're watching now. There are three types of zero ro robotics tournaments, the high school tournament, a middle school summer program, which is what we're watching today, and the open challenge. Again, more information on this can be found online at the Zero Robotics website. Okay, the match between St. Lucie and Timothy has begun. And this test run is also looking good.
Still looking good for Sears. This is going to be a close one. Uh, for the blue satellite, St. Lucie, 57. And for the red satellite, Simulty, 38. Here's copy, 57 for blue, 38 for red. And stand by for results of this run as well as the bracket two winner. Bye. And Karen, we have a winner for bracket two, Ralph Williams. And for the run golf, St. Lucie was the winner of that one. And we can move on to Hotel. Timothy versus Bellwood. Happy all.
there. This is looking great. Yeah. And we appreciate the photos. No problem. This match is complete. The blue satellite, Timothy, got a value of 4.8. And the red satellite, Bellwood, a value of 2.9. Sears copies, 4.8 blue, 2.9 red. Copy. is the winner of that round. We can move on to India. Bellwood versus San Lucia. Moving on to the next. Final run before the championship. This test is proceeding as planned.
that match is complete, the blue satellite, Bellwood, has a value of 2-9. Red satellite, St. Lucie, a value of 5-7. Sears copies 29 for blue, 57 for red, and stand by for results before we uh, move into the championship match. Copy. We're eager and waiting. Houston station on one. Um, it is Bravo. Uh, I am complete my private conference. Thank you very much. And uh, normalize uh, channel four. We copy, Pavel. Thank you. This is Mission Control Houston again with a live view in the International Space Station. You're looking inside the Kibo Japanese module as. Karen Nyberg and astronaut Chris Cassidy uh, helping to work through the Zero Robotics Middle School 2013 final competition, as you can see, using the onboard spheres robots for that activity. We are going to have pop pads. Please close uh, the hatches between DC-1 and uh, Progress, and uh, let us know if it's not working out. That activity started just about an hour ago as they have been working through these uh, bracket involving these middle school teams. All of the students uh, present at MIT University watching this activity go on. Zero Robotics was created in 2009 by the MIT Space Systems Laboratory and astronaut Greg Shamatoff with the goal of opening research on the International Space Station to large groups of secondary school students. In the fall of that same year, they conducted a pilot program of the Zero Robotics competition with two schools from northern Idaho. The competition was motivated by the idea of a satellite assistant robot. The first robotics competition aboard the space station took place on December of that year. Zero Robotics is a component of NASA's Summer of Innovation, a nationwide program targeted at encouraging STEM education for middle school students. During this competition, 10 teams and over 150 students from schools in the Boston area worked for five weeks to program the spheres to compete in an obstacle course race. After diligently working, the students sent their programs to the space station and watched the live competition in August of 2010. Station for spheres. We have a winner for that last run as well as bracket three. St. Lucie is the winner uh, for the test run and bracket three. And when you are ready to copy, I can provide you the information for the championship match. To copy. For test run Juliet, it will be Team 3, North Idaho, versus Team 4, Ralph Williams. Copy. For test run Kilo, it will be Team 4, Ralph Williams, versus Team 7, St. Lucie. Copy 4 and 7, and row K. And for test run Lima, it will be Team 7, Lucie, versus Team 3, North Idaho. See that. Congratulations to the three finalists.
Great, thanks, and now it gets really good. As you've heard now, the top three schools have been identified for this final championship bracket of the Zero Robotics competition. Uh, please. The Spheres Robotics, uh, Zero Robotics program is led by MIT as well as Top Coder and Aurora Flight Sciences under the sponsorship of DARPA and NASA. As we mentioned, this is an education outreach program using the SPHERES robots, but the SPHERES, which is stands for Synchronized Position, Hold, Engage, Reorient, Experimental Satellites. Experiment is actually an ongoing space station activity. It's a continuing investigation on the space station, which began during Expedition 8. Testing with one satellite was performed early during Expedition 13. The second satellite was delivered to the space station on Space Shuttle Mission STS-121, which allowed testing of the two-satellite configuration beginning in August 2006. A third satellite was delivered during the Space Shuttle Mission STS-116, and the three-satellite configuration testing began on Expedition 14. Here we go with uh, North Idaho versus Ralph Williams. With that, the first of three rounds as part of the championship bracket is beginning. The uh, principal investigator for Spheres is from MIT, but it's uh, notably also led by co-investigator astronaut Gregory Shamatov, who uh, is a graduate of MIT as well. The uh, space station spheres studies will help lead to simpler autonomous docking and uh, rendezvous op operations. It also has some Earth applications. The space te technologies for formation flight of small satellites could influence Earth-based applications of current satellite technologies, including surveillance, mapping, communications, and navigation. More information about the space station spheres study can be found on our website under www.nasa.gov slash station and on the research and technology link you can find a link of a, a list of all the studies and experiments including spheres. Things are looking good, Chris and Karen. Chris, no use in the force.
status match is complete. The blue satellite, North Idaho, has a value of 2-3. And the satellite, Ralph Williams, a value of 5-4. Here's copies. We have two, three for blue, five, four for red. And Ralph Williams is the winner. We can move on to Kilo. Great view, Chris. Okay, hey, moving on to Kilo. Great, and we read those gauges, Chris. Thank you. Karen and Chris, this is looking good. Both steers are laying their obstacles. As you're seeing, the Zero Robotics Middle School final competition continuing. We're in the final bracket for the middle school championships. These uh, remaining three teams participating in the rapid entry trajectory by retrograde ablation game. The matches are being played by using two sphere satellites, which are shown here, one red, one blue, that uh, are competing to get through a virtual course fastest using the least fuel. Though it, we can't see it, the game is broken up into three zones. The first zone have uh, the spheres using the opportunity to lay down virtual dust clouds in the playing field to simulate space junk ablation. In addition, those uh, virtual dust clouds are also placed in the return path of the opponents when they head to the finish line. And in the second zone, the player must rendezvous with a virtual disabled satellite. All this activity playing out in the Japanese experiment module of the International Space Station. NASA astronauts Chris Cassidy and Karen Nyberg overseeing the activities and helping to uh, execute these operations on board while uh, the middle school students themselves are watching from MIT.
Okay, in this match, the blue satellite, Ralph Williams, got a value of 2-4, and the red satellite, St. Lucy, a value of 4-7. Here's copies, two, four, four, blue, four, seven, red. Four and four, seven, that's a good copy. In this competition, there are middle school students from several states, including Florida, Georgia, Idaho, and Massachusetts. This, uh, today's activity, again, culminating several months of online and virtual competition that has, uh, been ongoing leading up to this on-orbit uh, final competition. And Karen and Chris, this is Sears back with you. St. Lucy was the winner of that one. And if you can hang tight with us for a few minutes, we've got a short couple-minute handover, and we'll let you know when we're back with you. I would suspect uh, no more than three or four minutes. No problem. We'll talk to you in a couple minutes. Great. Thanks, Karen. As you heard, we have a brief uh, drop in the live link up with the International Space Station, but all the activities on orbit going well with the Expedition 36 crew in the afternoon of their crew day. Chris Cassidy and Karen Nyberg will continue with the Zero Robotics competition. Uh, meanwhile, their counterparts continuing with their tasks, their Russian cosmonauts making final preparations for the spacewalk, which is planned for Friday. That will be conducted by Fyodor Yurchikin and Alexander Masurkin. They've spent the day outfitting their Russian Orlan spacesuits and configuring tools as well as well as reviewing the procedures. All of the activities going smoothly and as we mentioned uh, a big bulk of the afternoon for Karen and Chris is focused on this education outreach activity. During this gap we can replay for you the intro that kicked off this uh, competition session just about an hour ago. This is MIT on Space City Round 3. How do you copy, Chris and Karen? MIT, it's great to be with you today. We're so excited to be part of this competition. And uh, a special congratulations to all nine of the, of the schools. And uh, I know there's some excited students there and probably some parents and teachers as well. And it's really a privilege for us to, uh, to be part of this competition and watch your computer code make these spheres uh, zip around the space station, and uh, we're really excited. So a warm welcome to Boston, a warm welcome to the International Space Station, and, uh, and Karen and I are really happy to be here. Hello, and congratulations to all the students uh, competing in this competition today. We heard that the process you guys went through was first to learn programming on your own, and then you built a team and worked together on a team to come up with the code. To, uh, to enter this competition. You're going to find out as your life goes on that that's how it, how it usually works in, in the jobs that you'll get. Um, you start by learning the technical skills on your own, and then mostly you end up working as a team, just like here on the International Space Station. It's a team uh, effort from around the world. So hopefully this will spark an interest for you to continue uh, the rest of your life being interested in science, technology, engineering, and math. And let's have fun today. So with that, unless you have any, any specific questions for us, we're going to jump right into it and uh, kick off. 
Sorry, Chris, I might have stepped on you guys. there. Uh, you can hear the cheer from the students in the room here. And of course, there are guys around uh, the country, too, that have done this programming. You guys look uh, really happy. That must mean you have a really good handle on this Spears plan. It's complicated on board. It's more complicated on the ground, but I know it's complicated on board. Uh, we're hoping you guys can do better than the Expedition 34 crew did at uh, getting these deployments all properly done. Oh, great to hear your voice, Kevin, and I'm really happy that you're there uh, to, to share a little bit of insight about what the life on the space station and what it's like to be employing the, these uh, satellites as we move on with the competition. But I guess um, we've got a lot of work to do, and without any further ado, we should get on with the competition. What do you say? Okay. Uh, good to hear you guys' voices. I'm going to turn it over to the team. Chris, I did want to pass on from your advisor, John Leonard, that he found a mistake in your thesis at MIT, and as soon as you get home, uh, you need to come back and get some more work. I'll get right on that. I, fortunately, I have a daughter there that can take care of it for me. Everybody knows that location. It's uh, very visible. It's uh, easily, easily find, to find, easy to find. And we copy all. Thanks, Luca. This is Mission Control Houston again, back with a live view in the International Space Station, where the final round is in way, uh, underway with the Zero Robotics Middle School competition. In the view, you can see astronauts Karen Nyberg and Chris Cassidy getting some uh, good photos of this uh, final round. This is the uh, championship bracket of this middle school competition, and uh, all the activities going smoothly on board as the uh, two spheres robots uh, play out these uh, this final virtual obstacle course. This final round is being performed by students uh, from the North Idaho STEM team and uh, Port St. Lucie Middle School, rather Southern Oaks Middle School in Port St. Lucie. Students all gathered there at MIT uh, watching as this activity uh, continues and they stand by for the, the outcome and the final winner of today's competition. As you heard that uh, replay of the opening from astronaut Karen Nyberg and Chris Cassidy. The two, of course, with their own uh, strong technical backgrounds and some good words from Karen Nyberg about uh, the combination of technical expertise combined with teamwork to execute their goals. Nyberg herself holds engineering degrees from the University of North Dakota as well as the University of Texas at Austin. And Chris Cassidy, who uh, mentioned that he has a daughter attending MIT, he has his own master's degree from uh, master's in ocean engineering from MIT. He also holds a, a degree in mathematics from the U.S. Naval Academy. For this competition, the teams, uh, each of the spheres must complete the course within three minutes. Final match is complete. We have for the blue satellite, St. Lucie, a value of 5-7. And for the red satellite, North Idaho, a value of 3-3. Three, three. Uh, 
Aaron Spears copies five seven for blue, three three for red. And if you and Chris don't mind standing by, we're going to have the auditorium at MIT announce the winner up to you uh, very shortly as we uh, wrap things up with Kevin down down on the ground. Sounds good. We'll be standing by. Great. Thank you. And if I don't get an opportunity, I wanted to say what a privilege this was working with you guys from training down at JFE and seeing you two operate the spheres up here. This, is, this has really been an amazing experience for all of us. Thank you. Our pleasure as well. Thank you for the training and this opportunity. Uh, we'll talk to you, I'm sure, uh, back in Houston. I'll hold you to that. And as you've heard there, the team is uh, going to do some final assessments. Hello, MIT. We hear you loud and clear. Thank you, Station. Chris, Karen, uh, this is Alvar Santotero, the MIT Spirit Lead Scientist. Kevin asked me to call up the finalists because he says he doesn't know them, but he'll get to know them shortly for lots of pictures. Thank you very much. Um, our champions for this year's summer competition is St. Lucy II from Florida. Oh, congratulations. That's, that's great. We were trying to uh, figure it out up here, but it was a close competition. We knew St. Lucy was doing great um, and really happy to hear that. And uh, now that I've announced the winner, I will put Kevin online to uh, say a nice three astronauts uh, end to the competition. Thank you very much again for my end, and here's Kevin. So, hey, guys, uh, great work up there. I think uh, I'm seeing lots of stars up there today. You guys are stars, for one thing. I think I saw some stars on here in Spain. Velcro. All right, well, it's good to have somebody creative on board. Uh, I didn't have anybody on board when I was there to sew Velcro onto my pants. And I know, uh, Karen, that's a hobby of yours. Uh, these guys uh, have a lot of great questions down here about working and living in space. Uh, you guys uh, are very efficient. Uh, I love the new Space to Ground channels you have, uh, new video channels. That's a great view you guys gave us from the Kibo uh, high-definition camera there today. Really cool. It's fun to watch it from down here. Hopefully you guys will get to come here yourselves after landing and uh, watch one of these competitions and see how exciting it is uh, from down here. Uh, you guys um, made quick work of it today. We always ran, we ran an hour over usually on our competitions, and uh, you guys came up an hour short on time, so you guys really have your acts together. Uh, I, maybe it's because you're both such experienced uh, space flyers. Karen actually put that module on the space station right there, so she kind of owns Kibo, in addition to HTV, which is now on, uh, on Node 2. So it was great watching you guys work on board. Uh, I'm going to take some questions from these guys. I don't know if you have anything else you want to say to the students, but uh, it was inspiring watching you guys work. You're getting around really well, and looking forward to seeing you back on Earth again one of these days. Yeah, we really enjoyed doing this. Um, I wish I could be there and see the, the faces on the students. This is quite a, a privilege for them, plus um, I know they worked very hard to get here. So um, with their hard work and um, everything they did to um, become one of the finalists to actually fly their code on the International Space Station, I think is pretty cool. So congratulations to all of you that competed today, and uh, hope you had a good time.